Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to this SIP remote worship service from St. Peter's Lutheran Church for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, November 15th, 2020. We gather as God's people to receive the blessings that God has promised and to thank and praise Him for those blessings. We sing the opening hymn, Number 508, The Day is Surely Drawing Near. shall banish idle mirth, and flame on flame shall ravage earth, as scripture long has warned us. A final trumpet then shall sound, and all earth shape shaken. On all who rest beneath the ground Shall from their sleep awaken But all who live will in that hour By God's almighty boundless power Be changed at His commanding May Christ our intercessor be, and through his blood and merit, read from his book that we are free with all who life inherit. Then we shall see him face to face with all his saints in that blessed place which he has purchased for us. O oh, Jesus Christ, do not delay, but hasten our salvation. We often tremble on our way, in fear and tribulation. O oh, hear and grant our fervent plea, come mighty judge to set us free from death and every evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Intro Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness bring my soul out of trouble. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hear my voice, O Lord. Give ear to my plea for mercy. In your faithfulness answer me in your righteousness. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast 
of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through these things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lectionary The Old Testament reading for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost is from Zephaniah chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons, all who have arrayed themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of mortar, for all the traitors are no more, all who weigh out silver are cut off. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blasts and battle cries against the fortified cities, and against the lofty battlements. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gradual He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The Epistle Reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, 
let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The verse of the day. Alleluia, for to every one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel and the basis of our meditation for today is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, It will be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents, here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a little, I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed, and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to every one who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, 
Very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sing the hymn of the day, 613, to Thee, Omniscient Lord of all. The Message A Good and Faithful Servant Matthew twenty five fourteen through thirty Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For to every one who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast that worthless servant into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is our text. There are two types of people in this world. We've all heard that many times, 
and then the person goes on to expound on some great wisdom that he has discovered. There are many ways that we can divide people. Someone once said, there are two types of people in this world, those who think that there are two types of people in this world, and those who do not. This basically leaves everything black and white, which is often not true. For instance, I have heard it said that there are only two types of people when it comes to gun control laws. People who would feel safer if no one had a gun, and people who would feel safer if everyone had a gun. Of course, almost no one believes either one of those two extreme positions. When Jesus told the parable of the talents, as it's recorded in Matthew 25, he was giving us his own version of this statement. There are two types of servants in this parable, those who are faithful and those who are not. Here, too, outside the parable, neither of the servants is absolutely as they are portrayed. In real life, a faithful servant is never absolutely faithful and the unfaithful servant normally isn't a complete scoundrel. This parable in itself happens in a long series of vignettes of Jesus during his final trip to Jerusalem. After a series of woes declared on the Pharisees in Matthew 23, ending with Jesus weeping over Jerusalem because it will not come to him for relief, the present discussion about the end times begins in Matthew 24, when, while leaving the temple, his disciples mentioned the beauty of the buildings. Commenting on this, Jesus predicting the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70 by the Romans declares, You see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. To impress upon his disciples, the end of their somewhat idyllic existence under his tutelage in the holy city of God. Matthew 24 contains this prediction in the signs of the end times, the fulfillment of the prophet Daniel's abomination of desolations. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of here by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, that the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house, that the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And a final parable illustrating that no one knows the date or time of the day of the Lord. Matthew 25 continues this discussion, starting with the parable we discussed last Sunday, the parable of the ten virgins, which warns his disciples and us to be prepared at all times for the coming of the day of the Lord, repeating the warning of the suddenness of its appearance. Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This discussion also raises the question of how one of God's children should be prepared for this last day. This begins our text for today, Matthew 25, 14 through 30. We are obviously still discussing the day of the Lord because this parable starts with the words, For it will be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusts to them his property to each according to his ability, where it can only mean the day of the Lord. Of course, since this is a parable about heaven, the master is God. The fact that after the master distributes his talents and then goes away for a long time represents that the day of the Lord, which ushers in the kingdom of heaven, seems long delayed by human standards. The talents represents the abilities that God gives to all people. The servants are, of course, God's chosen people. Now the parable continues as we well remember, with the servant with five talents and the servant with two talents applying themselves 
and doubling their master's property entrusted to them. However, the unfaithful servant, afraid of his master's wrath, buries the talent entrusted to him rather than risk losing it and being punished by his master. Then, after the long period of time described in the parable, the master returns and calls for an accounting of the activities of his servants. The two good servants, who have doubled the talents entrusted to them, the master praises, promises to entrust more to their keeping, and invites them to share in the benefits of his kingdom. The bad servant the master berates, removes the talent entrusted to him, and throws him into the outer darkness, in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, which we normally equate with casting him into hell. On the surface, this would seem like a straightforward works righteousness story. If the servants do well, they are rewarded. If they do poorly, they are punished. That would fit well into the common religious thinking of Jesus' time. However, we have to consider who is saying this. Jesus, who is his audience, the disciples shortly to become the apostles, and the fact that work righteousness doesn't fit into Jesus' normal message. So, what are we missing here? First of all, we must consider the point of view that the parable is written from. Who does most of the action in this parable? Actually, it is the master. Who does most of the acting in this parable? He is the one who divides his good among his servants according to their ability, thus providing them with the resources they need to accomplish anything, and then gives them the opportunity that they need to live up to their potential by going away for a long period of time. Although it isn't stated in the parable. It is also likely that his reputation and connections in the community do a great deal to enable his servants to perform so well and to be respected in their efforts. Yes, they make the decisions involved and imply themselves to the task at hand, but it is their master who has provided their talents, resources, and opportunities to either fail or succeed in the task he has given them. So, as we once again consider this parable and how it portrays the kingdom of heaven, and how the disciples and we are to be prepared for his coming with the day of the Lord, we are pointed to the actions of our Master, God, to enable us to be good and faithful servants. After all, it is God who has given us our talents and abilities. It is God who has arranged our life. With certain opportunities and resources, and above all, it is God who has redeemed us that we may live under His care and protection, while we take advantage of all the gifts He has given us, so that we may prosper in our earthly witness to His great love and care for us. In the final analysis, the majority of our ability to be good and faithful servants is supplied by our Master, God. In fact, God even supplies us with His forgiveness, so that even when we fall short in achieving the tasks He has set before us, He still judges us as good and faithful servants. In a real sense, this is the greatest contribution of God to our becoming the servants He requires us to be. For shortly before, in Matthew twenty, Jesus Himself says. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be the first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Informing these same disciples, he is telling this parable that his mission is to be a good and faithful servant to his Father by serving us as our Redeemer. God sent His Son to be our Redeemer, forgiving us all our sins and empowering us to become the good servants He wants us to be. Jesus became a good and faithful servant to our needs, 
so that we might become good and faithful servants of God. Now that Jesus has become the good and faithful servant in his mission for God to empower us to be good and faithful servants of God, he has become the good and faithful master to enable and empower us to witness to God's great love at work in our lives and to enable us to be declared good and faithful servants by his redeeming work for us on the cross. Through God-given faith, we become, in Jesus, what we are not able to do on our own. There are two types of people in this world, those who are faithful by faith in God's promises and those who are not because they stubbornly refuse God's gift of forgiveness to work in their lives. The incarnate Jesus is a good and faithful man par excellence during his mission on earth. That is, Jesus is good to us and faithful to his promises. He is our master, and he is both good and faithful to us, his servants. This master is coming back soon. Come quickly, good and faithful master, and help us become good and faithful servants. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen. Prayers of the Church Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you are worthy of being praised for all your gifts and graces, which you have given to us, your unworthy people. Hear us this day as we cry to you for mercy toward all people as they have need. You have made us your people and preserved us through the ministry of your word and sacrament. Continue to pour out upon us grace upon grace, that we may be kept in faith and guarded in hope. Make your church throughout the world one in doctrine, confession, and life, and give to your church faithful pastors who will preach and teach your word with conviction. Deliver us from confusion and error by the power of your Holy Spirit, and raise up those who will continue to serve in faithfulness and humility. Deliver all enemies of your church and convert their hearts to repentance and faith. Strengthen all Christians in their faith and in their vocations of service as your children, that we may be obedient to your word and receive the salvation of our souls. Deliver the nations from oppression and ungodly rulers and governments. Bless all in authority within our own nation, that righteousness may flourish and injustice end. Bless all those places where your people teach and learn that our children may honor you, walk in your commandments, and show forth in their lives the fruits of the Spirit. Prevent all disasters and calamity, deliver us from war and violence, and spare us from pestilence. Help us to know and rejoice in the good fruits of the earth. Bless all noble occupations and help the arts to flourish, that our lives may be enriched by beauty. Help us to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of the earth you supply for our common good. Receive with our song of praise and sacrifice of thanksgiving the tithes and offerings we bring, that through good use of the skills, talents, and time you have given us, you may be glorified in all we are and do. Give to the sick healing, to the suffering relief, to the grieving hope, and to the dying peace. Hear us especially on behalf of those who have requested our prayers, especially Brandon, Vitra, Rick, June, June, Judy, Cheryl, Aaron, Pastor Brian, Pastor Jim, Pastor John, Daniel, Terry, Michelle, Janet, Jennifer, and J.P. 
for the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, Vitra, Rick, and June, and all those we name in our hearts. Sustain us in the day of trial, deliver us from all our enemies of body and soul, and keep us steadfast in the day of trouble. Remembering that here we have no abiding city, but heaven is our home, give us your aid, so that we may by true faith and godly life prepare for the coming of our Savior, doing the work you have called us to do, and accomplishing your purpose in our daily lives. Help us to multiply your mercies by loving our neighbors in need and loving you with all our body, soul, strength, and will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all things for which the Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing the closing hymn, number 826, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying. of Jesus crying who will go and work today fields are wide and harvest waiting who will bear the sheaves away loud and long the master calleth rich rewards he offers thee who will answer gladly saying here am I, send me, send me. If you cannot speak like angels, If you cannot preach like Paul, You can tell the love of Jesus, You can say he died for all. If you cannot rouse the wicked with a judgment's dread alarm, you can lead all little children to the Savior's waiting arms. If you cannot be a watchman standing high on Zion's wall, Pointing out the path to heaven, Offering life and peace to all. With your prayers and with your bounties, You can do what God commands. You can be like faithful Aaron, Holding up the prophet's hands. Let none hear you idly saying, There is nothing I can do. While the multitudes are dying, And the Master calls for you, Take the task he gives you gladly, Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth, Here am I, send me, send me.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the long meter doxology number 805. Creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 